forces. Arwa, how have the airstrikes impacted the opposition's ability to move forward and regain critical ground? Well, Elliot, they've impacted that significantly, and more importantly, many people will tell you that without those airstrikes, the residents of Benghazi quite simply would have eventually been massacred. What we have seen happening since those airstrikes really began pounding Gaddafi's military machine that was just outside and even inside Benghazi was the opposition capitalizing on that, driving Gaddafi's forces further back to the city of Ajdabia. It's around 100 miles. Uh, west of Benghazi. And there, though, we're seeing where their military shortcomings really come into play. They're right now stationed just a few miles outside of the northern entrance to Ajdabia. They're telling us that airstrikes have been pounding Gaddafi's tanks stationed there. They've managed to destroy three of them, but not all of them. The opposition really still struggling to move forward because of the heavy artillery and tank barrage that is being fired at them. One has to remember that the opposition fighters are not much more than civilians who effectively learned how to fight over the last few weeks. They're out there with very little military experience. They don't even have body armor. Many of them are telling us, their commander is telling us, that they need weapons and equipment to be able to move this fight to the last stage. The airstrikes most certainly dealing Gaddafi's forces a devastating blow, but for the opposition to be able to deal Gaddafi's military a final blow, that's going to be a really, really big challenge, Elliot. So it sounds to me, Arwa, like what you're saying is that unless we somehow show up with arms and training and something more than air support, we could be heading towards a stalemate in the desert in this battle. Well, that, of course, is, is the concern, and it's a very real concern because of the fact that this opposition military isn't even a military at all. Look, these people out there on the front line, and you talk to them, they have a lot of heart. They have a lot of courage. They keep saying that they're doing the best that they can, that they are going to fight this out to the death, and they most certainly will. But the big concern from a military perspective, and this is what their commander told us, General Yunus, was that without the equipment, without the weapons, this is going to drag on for a very long time, and it is going to be very, very bloody. The concern, of course, is that whilst this is dragging out, how many lives are going to be lost? What is the expense going to be? We look at these areas that Gaddafi's military is effectively entrenched in, putting themselves out of reach of the airstrikes because of concerns for collateral damage. And we look at the humanitarian cost there. We listen to these eyewitness reports talking about massacres at the hands of Gaddafi's forces, and one shudders to think how many more lives are going to be lost until this is somehow brought about to an end, until there is some sort of resolution.